On December 18th, 2015, the first live-action Star Wars movie in 10 years was released in the theaters to critical and commercial acclaim. That movie, The Force Awakens, was a historic moment for movies in the 2010s. Following the success of earlier films of that year, such as Mad Max Fury Road and Jurassic World, The Force Awakens sparked a renewed interest in the Star Wars brand that a lot of people hadn't really had in some time. During that period in time, my generation, the ones who were raised on the Star Wars Special Edition, as well as the prequel trilogy, ate that stuff up in mass. This was the first time in a long while that Star Wars was actually cool again, which personally I hadn't really witnessed since the hype surrounding The Phantom Menace when I was a little kid in 1999. Now over half a decade later, The Force Awakens and more importantly its sequels, The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, are kind of looked upon in a rather negative light. What was once viewed as the triumphant return of a franchise is now sputtered out into something of a massive feeling of disappointment to many. And this was felt by a large majority of audience goers up until the release of The Mandalorian in 2019 and 2020. So what exactly happened? How does a franchise go from grossing over $2 billion with its comeback film to later going on to be known for spawning a lackluster trilogy? Well, in this video, I kind of want to dive into that and give my own perspective on the subject matter. Because if there's one thing that's been really fascinating for me to watch over the last few years, it's observing how Star Wars was at one point in time on top of the world and then watching it kind of fall into ridicule just two movies later. Now, before I begin, I want to make it clear that I'm not really going to be coming from any sort of antagonistic angle towards this movie, and I'm really just going to share my own experience with the film and how times have changed since its release. This isn't really designed to be one of those anti-Star Wars videos because I'm actually a pretty big fan of the source material, particularly everything created by George Lucas, but I will say that what I'm going to be going over here is basically just the feelings and opinions of one guy who was incredibly excited to see where these filmmakers would take this series only to be let down once the credits rolled on episode 9. So let's go back to 2015. Just a few months earlier in the summer, Jurassic World had been released to a massive unprecedented level of commercial and even critical success that literally nobody expected. At the time of its release, several websites and YouTube channels such as Collider would often run articles and headlines that basically said, Jurassic Park is the only good movie, everything else sucks, it was never meant to be a franchise, and Jurassic World is going to be a bigger disappointment than Jurassic Park 3. But as the old saying goes, the market determines the market, and Jurassic World not only surpassed both The Lost World and JP3's box office earnings, but it was the first sequel in the franchise to actually be reviewed positively by a majority of both film critics and audiences. Now sure, Jurassic World didn't exactly walk away with a perfect score from anybody. There was a lot of talk online about Claire Deering's outrunning of a T-Rex in high heels, and Joss Whedon tried to smear Colin Trevorrow as a sexist in several different forms of media. And then, of course, the movie's violence was also the subject of critique, after the character of Zara was brutally killed by a double attack of Pteranodon and Mosasaurus. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> but all in all, Jurassic World proved the naysayers wrong in a gigantic way. And it's over 70% on Rotten Tomatoes, as well as its $1.67 billion, backed it up with a pretty solid level of confidence. Then came time for everyone to get hyped up for The Force Awakens. This was the year of returning nostalgia after all, and even though a lot of blockbusters had tried to bring in the big bucks and wow audiences before in the past, Jurassic World was the only one to really do it successfully at this point in time. I really liked Fury Road, I really didn't like Genesis, neither of those really made that much money. So everyone was out talking about Episode 7. What was it going to be like? Would it be any good? What are your thoughts on Jar Jar Binks being a Sith Lord? I'm sure you all remember all those conversations people were having. Now at the time, I had actually just opened up my personal training business while still delivering pizzas at a Domino's. I was 21 years old, a giant fan of The Empire Strikes Back and Revenge of the Sith, and I couldn't wait to see what J.J. Abrams had in store. Jurassic World genuinely shocked me because I actually had no idea what to expect. And when I left the theater, I thought it was not only a good sequel, but it was better than the sequel that I had loved all of my life and still love to this day, The Lost World. So The Force Awakens could very well deliver on that sort of hype as well. After all, this was just six months later and everyone around me was getting pumped. 
Well, when the movie came out, it not only made more money than Jurassic World, it made critics outrageously happy as well, which I thought was a little weird at the time because I picked up on a few things that bothered me upon my initial screening, but I didn't really hate anything about it. In fact, I kind of thought it was awesome and drank the Kool-Aid from those telling me that it was not only good, but great in comparison to everything that came before except for episodes four and five. Well, then Rogue One came out and I really didn't like it. I liked the end of the movie, sure, but for the most part, I thought it was actually a pretty boring adventure film with little to no interesting scenes that I could really talk about after the fact. And as a matter of fact, I know that a lot of people said that it was like really good and The Phantom Menace was really bad, and I, I kind of thought they were of comparable quality, although I grew up with The Phantom Menace, so I wanted to go back to that and not Rogue One. Then I saw The Last Jedi, mind you. This is deep into the success of my own YouTube channel where I was already talking about what we could expect to see in Fallen Kingdom. So I'd been in the YouTube space for a relatively fine amount of time and even had around 20,000 subscribers. Then I saw The Last Jedi and oh boy, wow, did everything change overnight. You see, the interesting thing about The Force Awakens that I think nobody really talks about is the fact that while there were people upset with the movie when it initially came out, the overwhelming majority of the world absolutely loved it in 2015 and in 2016. And I was one of them. But after episode eight, I don't know what it was, but I just couldn't make myself watch that film anymore. In fact, I started to go out of my way to watch a lot of criticism-oriented videos on the film that lasted like five hours in length, and I found myself agreeing with much of what others had to say. The weird thing is, though, I couldn't clock any of that from the last movie. And upon my eventual rewatch, I slowly began to understand that Episode 7 also had its problems that a lot of people had kind of let go unnoticed. So why did this happen? Well, I think the idea of a sequel being so disappointing that it actually taints the original work that came before it is usually not true, but this time I actually think an entire discussion needs to be had on that. You see, if we could go back to 2015 and 2016 and just talk about Star Wars as we know it back then, I would absolutely love it because part of the enjoyment and excitement for where the series could go really was belonging to all of the questions that were left after watching The Force Awakens. Who was Supreme Leader Snoke? How was Rey so good at being a Jedi without any training? Where did the First Order come from? How did Ben fall to the dark side? What happened to Luke? All of this stuff was racking my brain as a Domino's delivery driving personal trainer in his early 20s. And I wanted to know everything. But after The Last Jedi came out, I know this sounds kind of weird to say, but I honestly felt betrayed by the filmmakers in a pretty massive way. And it wasn't even necessarily what happened in the movie so much as the way some of the people that made the movie reacted to the fan reception upon release. This is one of the reasons that I've actually grown to have so much respect and admiration for people like Colin Trevorrow, who actually straight up acknowledges problems that have gone down in the Jurassic World movies and works with fans to try and guide the films and the canon in the best place it can possibly be. That's the way of a filmmaker that cares about the audience or more importantly the customer whereas i really really didn't feel that way about star wars so looking back at episode seven i think the movie is undeniably shot and presented in a very fun way it utilizes a lot of visual imagery that is reminiscent of episode four and in fact while the plot of the movie did really borrow quite a lot from that film i didn't honestly care i had a great time with it and it was just super fun to see han solo doing han solo things again all the while luke skywalker was teased as being the super secretive jedi master of great importance at the end of the film i I thought the cast was all around really good. I actually cared about what would happen to both Rey and Finn, but in the end, it just felt like I'd seen a good movie. Now, there was a lot of talk of feminism or really toxic femininity seeping into The Force Awakens, but I gotta be honest with you, I never really felt that way about the film at all when it came out. And honestly, it felt very clickbaity and wrong to pin on that film at the time of its release. However, However, I will say that after episode seven came out, I did catch on to a noticeable focus on that kind of female-oriented dialogue being had by a lot of people following its release. 
This came from all ends of the universe, both opposing and for the new Star Wars movies, and in my opinion, the filmmakers actually leaned into that stuff from episode 8 onwards. So, is that a bad thing? Well, you gotta understand, man, that in the late 2010s, and it's even worse now, but these were a very polarizing time for people all over the world, and with the rise of a very us versus them narrative of tribalism that was taking over not only politics, but also digging into media from all corners of the earth, it did get kind of ridiculous after a while. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that it got to the point that a lot of people felt like the story was taking a backseat to bickering and arguments that people had in the movie industry against other people in the world, which isn't really ever a good thing. But what I think really did this whole trilogy in wasn't actually any sort of politics that got talked about on the internet, but it was actually the lack of planning out a consistent trilogy from the get-go. You see, George Lucas poured a lot of politics into his prequels, and when I grew up watching them, I obviously never really noticed, but nowadays, it's pretty obvious that the man had a really big problem with the forever wars that were taking place in the Middle East. And I don't blame him, I think, for someone like George, who obviously comes from the whole 1970s Star Wars Vietnam era landscape, I can totally see where he's coming from in a post 9-11 world. And if you compare episode one to episodes two and three, it's kind of obvious that all this stuff was on his mind. But none of that ever really hurt the trilogy in my opinion because it was actually part of the story. Whereas characters like Poe, who just sort of get elevated to main protagonist status in a sequel and are given this really weird sort of lesson in The Last Jedi, they don't really come off as like, I don't know, necessary? And instead it's just, well it all really got weird in my opinion. Once again, if we go back to The Force Awakens, this kind of thing didn't really exist, or at least it wasn't a part of the narrative in any explicit way yet. Remember when we all thought that Captain Phasma was going to be some sort of badass warrior with a lot of cool action scenes making her a legendary villain in the trilogy? And then remember when Ryan Johnson chose to have a scene where horses get freed on a casino planet instead? What was going on there? I'm all for animal rights and making sure that nothing has to suffer too, but like, what does this have to do with the actual story? I, I still, I don't know. This is a bigger problem that stems from them not actually planning the trilogy. And I think that sadly, you can see that stuff actually start in episode 7. It's well known now that when they were making these films, they had no idea where they were going to go. While in the beginning, they kind of toyed with the idea of Rey becoming something of a Kenobi descendant. You know, she's got the accent, she lives in the desert, and she even has strong force abilities. This was the theory I actually believed in the most, by the way. That all eventually got left behind and they ended up making her a Palpatine instead, which... I still really don't like. And I actually really liked Rey in The Force Awakens. And I liked Finn in that movie too. And I just thought that Kylo Ren and the whole Knights of Ren thing and what they had planned for the First Order sounded like an incredible continuation of a series that I was dying to see and yet, I don't know, it all just kind of fell apart for me. All of the mysteries and all of the secrets behind what had happened to Luke Skywalker after the events of Return of the Jedi were burning in my brain. and. I just literally couldn't wait to see what would come from all of that setup. And I wasn't the only one. Literally everyone I talked to after watching The Force Awakens was super interested in seeing where the story would go. This ranged from guys to girls to people in their 30s, 40s, and 20s like myself. But in the end, the Star Wars hype just sort of started to die. And I think that mainly stems from them not knowing where to go with this film that came out way back in 2015. Now I know I've said a lot of things that are kind of critical of the filmmaking decisions of this movie, but I don't want to get it twisted because rest assured, when it came out, I was all about episode 7. In fact, I actually no joke thought the Star Wars sequels would end up being a better trilogy in the 2010s than the Jurassic World movies would be. Nowadays. I definitely do not feel the same way at all. <laughs> Still, nothing can take away that time period when the world was super excited about these movies again. And my Jurassic Park obsessed inner kid that grew up loving the idea of Jar Jar Binks looking dinosaur creatures existing in that universe alongside Luke Skywalker and Han Solo just ate up all of the material surrounding Episode 7. The smiles and joy on people's faces were everywhere back then, but just a few years later, they all got replaced by size 
and groans from those that were disenchanted with how that trilogy progressed. The Force Awakens, in my opinion, is a movie that set up a lot of really interesting ideas and characters for a brand new era of filmmaking. They had all of the ingredients to make an excellent follow-up to the original trilogy. Han Solo's return, Luke Skywalker's ascent to Jedi Master, General Leia's wartime with the Resistance, the backstory of Finn, the potential of Rey, the origins of Snoke, continuation of a legacy that started all the way back when little Annie left his mom with good old Qui-Gon Jinn. We were all beyond excited to see how it would turn out, but in the end, a lack of basic structural planning, leaning into a polarized climate, and just overall weird personal decisions made that trilogy far less than what it could have been. And I know I'm not the only one to say this. I, I know a lot of you out there really loved Episode 7 when it came out, and you just didn't really care for Episode 8 or 9. While The Force Awakens was a true powerhouse of a movie, for me, when I was 21 years old, I just don't feel that way about it anymore. The Mandalorian, of course, reignited a lot of our love for the series, and Grogu has become an essential part of the Star Wars mythos. But man, when it comes down to The Force Awakens, I hate to say it, but... I don't think I'll ever be able to look at that movie the same way again after watching what came after. Still, I'll always remember those 2015 and 2016 times where it lit the world on fire and caught everyone's attention. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is I have to say.